Well, good afternoon. We're at the lake place for the weekend, Easter weekend, and uh, we're going we're gonna to fire the oiler up. I got, we're going to do six briskets. It's all cobwebby. We hadn't done our spring cleaning just because it's, it's rained every dadgum weekend we've had a chance. So, this is, ooh. I'm gonna clean this thing up so eventually, but not today. We're gonna fire it up today. Probably clean it tomorrow afternoon. After once we get everything good and warm. And, so, but anyway, um, leaves are piled up. That's kind of embarrassing, even to be putting this on camera. But that's all right. We're gonna clean the place up, and today is not not today, but this weekend is when it's gonna happen. So, got some oak here. Not much left of oak, some. This is walnut, not walnut, uh, another nut. That's pecan. The reason I don't know, we don't, we don't have a lot of it here. Uh, hickory, hickory is what this is. So anyway, that's pecan, hickory, oak. I like oak for most part to, uh, I like oak for most part to start my fires with and every I'll throw a little bit of pecan on there and some more oak stuff like that so anyway we're gonna get things going here that's no Kona yeah. alright so we're gonna put some we're gonna get us some oak I don't know where a good place to set y'all Anyway, in case you want, it's a JNR manufacturing. This one is a 1984 was when this one was built. I uh, I had another buddy, Chase. I think y'all saw him in the pig video. Uh, we come across it down in Glen Rose, and it was in a restaurant in Glen Rose, and they they caught it on fire. And these are supposed to be bulletproof. You can't catch them on fire unless you tamper with them. And I don't necessarily think they tampered with it in a malicious type of way. I think that what happened was when I got it, of course, there's a rust bucket, man. And I, I didn't replace this panel here, but you can see some of the rust build up here. And it's kind of coming apart. I need to, I need to do these last couple panels. But uh, they... The thermostat, what I figured out was the thermostat had quit working. And what I'm guessing was they didn't clean it out any, you know, maybe once or twice a year, something like that. The thermostat had quit working. And I'm guessing they went out, packed it full of wood, and uh, got the dampers there open, lit the fire, and basically, you know, let it go. Well, at some point, they caught the inside of that box on fire. And when they did that, of course, it burned it up. And, ooh, that's, maybe nothing there. So, Anyway, I found it on Craigslist. We made a deal for it. Um, paid, I think, $6,000 for it. And brought it back to my yard. Uh, got inside and, and took... I'm, not, I'm And I'm not exaggerating one bit. I cleaned out five five-gallon buckets of sludge that was in the bottom of that thing. It wouldn't even come out the drain. Um, that's a bad Um so I got that cleaned out, and then, you know, being a concrete guy, I had an air chisel, so I get in there, get through all the racks out, which were pretty much thrashed, warped and broke, rusted, I mean, 
I think there's maybe two original racks to two three, two hangers or so in there. Anyway, the rest I bought new, but I air I took an air hammer in there and chiseled out another four five gallon buckets of I don't know what you call, would call it creosote, I was metal flaking char, <laughs> the bad kind um, out of it. So. You know essentially i had to give it a really really good cleaning uh oh and that's other thing uh the rotisserie wouldn't turn he said you hear the motor kick on but the rotisserie won't turn well so once i got all that stuff beat out and chiseled out of it and i'm telling you i look like a coal miner for two days this is really a day project but i spent two in there uh, got in there and I need a camera guy. Got it all cleaned out and took a generator over there, plugged it in, and lo and behold, the, the rotisserie returned. Okay. Well, we got that far. So, uh, the next thing I did was went and got two bags of charcoal and I went and got a bundle of wood put a thermometer in there and uh my story uh, put a thermometer in there and went in and got it lit up I got it going and played with the thermostat a little bit and off the thermometer I put inside it took 375 degrees before the thermostat even started registering so okay we got a bad thermostat. Did a little. So anyway, we got, I shut it down basically, and pulled the old thermostat out, and I think that was it for the time being. Oh, uh, the, the switches, the damper switch, and the rotisserie switch were broken off of it. So. I got some new switches and uh, a thermostat and went to, I drove to Mesquite to, to J&R and got new, got, got all new stuff for that. So brought that back, wired it all in and everything was good. Uh, the only thing that's not working on it right now is the ejector, the 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 smoke ejector. There's two different dampers. One will one will is right above the thermostat or the thermostat, the, the the heat or the firebox, and the other one is the, the actual damper that the thermostat controls to open and shut to to let you know let more heat in or or to, to not let any heat down in at all. So that one works, fortunately. Um, I've just lived without the, the the main one because it's just more or less when you open the doors that's the one that kind of helps keep you from getting a lot, of, a lot of smoke and heat in the face but you know I kind of I live without it I'm okay with that I don't like losing all my heat anyway uh, so I'm fine with that one not working right now I probably eventually replace it uh, the other thing the bearings I had to go in. I need to replace them, but they're working. The rotisserie is spinning fine, but you can tell the, the outside of them got really, really hot. And probably at some point, I need to replace those bearings. Uh, I, the, the, the grease in those lines where, where you grease them, 
they were try. I mean, it was just caked. I had to take a I took an air compressor and cleaned those lines out and got it where it will take grease. So that's a good thing. What else? Um, uh, it's got a smoke. It's got a draft fan. I say a draft fan. Uh, it's got a fan. You kick it on, it'll 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 actually pull air and help you light the firebox. It works. Uh, I cleaned it up some, but I don't really ever use it because. I just take my propane burner and light my fire and go with that. So, anyway, that's something about this smoker. Uh, Jane R actually had it had it on record. They had a file for it. I gave them a serial number, and now they have my name as the owner of this smoker, which are pretty nice folks, pretty good people. Keep good records of the stuff. It's kind of interesting, I thought. Uh, but no, it, I, I love the cooker, and so it basically what we're doing now is we're getting a fire started and i fix and close it up and kind of let it get start heating up and uh we're gonna put some briskets on tonight so anyway thanks for joining me and we'll uh once the fire gets going i'll i'll come back to you and we'll get we'll get started on the briskets all right i cut the pear burner off and this is what we call the free burning stage you see how there's no hardly any smoke at all so we're gonna let that burn down a little bit then we'll try to get a little more logs in there so cut the lid just a little bit we'll come back to it in a minute. all right time is a 9 11. we're getting a bed of coals again i just threw a few more sticks of the wood on there so it's holding this temperature at 275 so i'm gonna let these get going here and i'm fixing to start prepping my briskets so i don't trim a lot of them off the deal is you, you, i mean they're gonna be on there for 15 16 hours so you're gonna render down the, the soft fat there is the, the hard fat that's on the side of the brisket and We'll trim some of that off, but for most part, I leave it. It's flavor. I leave it. I leave as much as I can on there to do it. So, and looking at this fire here, you know, once that gets going and starts burning down a little bit, another, you know, an hour. So I'm looking at 10 o'clock is my target to, to put the meat on. So by the time I get them seasoned up and get and that's the thing is i'll start putting them on now but by the time i'm done and shut the doors close it up and everything it's gonna be 9 45 10 o'clock so that's close enough and then we'll we'll they'll go all night uh the way these oilers are built they're insulated and they're they're fantastic on holding holding the heat so we'll turn it down it's like i said it's about 275 right now i'll turn it down to 225 and it'll go till oh, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. I'll get up, come out here, and I'll rake the coals around. It'll, it'll fall a little bit. Probably, I expect somewhere in, from the past, it'll be around 210, 215. So, rake the coals around, throw a few sticks on there, and let them go till about seven, seven or so. And then I'll, uh, I'll wrap them then, and then let them go till about noon, one o'clock. Uh, still at 225 it, and, and then they'll be they're pretty much done then so but it'll let the, the fat render down good be just a, a thin layer on there which will have a lot of seasoning which I'm using salt and pepper and all that so nothing else so and the thing is that that fat seems to hold that seasoning a little bit better too so I try to leave a lot of it on there uh it's just that 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 hard piece that goes along the side of the brisket's what we'll trim off because it doesn't it'll be there till you know whenever it, it just doesn't render so we'll trim as much of that off as possible so but anyway uh fix to get the briskets out and i'll uh i may put you on the cat cam or the, the chest harness and show you kind of how i trim them up a little bit and uh we'll go from there so i'll see you in a minute
like I was explaining earlier, not much fat on this bottom piece. Here's your peak, a little bit of fat up there. If you're feeling it, see it's soft. It's it's moving, you know, with the meat. Right here, that piece right there, it's hard. Compared to the meat and other fat, that's hard. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna take it all off, but we're gonna we're gonna thin it down considerable amount. So just kind of skim. Probably leave, I don't know what it's probably gonna be. Come back a little bit. So there's not any meat in there where I'm cutting, so we're doing good. Alright, I'm showing, showing a little meat on the edge here, which is fine. Alright, see, probably got half inch off of there, so a little bit of this piece here. Now, it's still some there, but it's 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 more pliable though. So and it runs out here there. So we'll, we'll get a little more. Of that off. Okay, that's good. All right. I'm not gonna. That's just going to be a burn in part of a burn in. So I'm not, I'm not all that concerned about that. Okay. Now. We're gonna take our salt. I'm using sea salt, of course. Sea salt. And I'm gonna just give it a good sprinkling of that. And that what'll happen is as that heat meat heats up and start releasing some juices. that salt will start to dissolve in. but as it does that I want to start coating that meat so and I'm sure there's a point that you can get too much but the amount of juice that comes off these meat you'll you'll wash off a bunch of it so I know that may look like a lot but it really won't be matter of fact I every time I do it I put a little more and then I always come back and say, I wish I'd put more salt on there. And, and I'm not really a, a big salt fan. I mean, I, I'm a fan, but I just, I don't like a lot of salt. This is coarse black pepper. That's what we're putting on now. And then I'm gonna come back with some fine black pepper. And I'm just gonna give that a good coat. And what that'll do, that'll fill in all my gaps. Okay. That's what that'll do. So, and that's what it should look like. Pat that down good. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Start over again. This is the fatty side, and then this will render down quite a bit. But like I said, we're going 15, 16 hours with this. There's not a certain time limit. I'm going with it, but I'm looking for a 200, 202 degree meat. But we're gonna let them chill when I get done. So you know you have to worry about that crumbling and peeling and peeling from each other. You know, where, you, where, where a brisket you get overcooked, it just pulls apart, falls apart, and all that stuff. It'll still make a good slice once I that's my ground. So, go back with the course again. The fat side, you can put a little more on there because all well, that renders off and just bleeds off. And but being on a rotisserie cooker, those juices will just go to each other. They'll they'll fall into the one below it. I 
to get away from him. Well. Huh? Well, this is Brookshire's. 249 a pound. 318. Where'd you get those? Sam's? Sam's. I've always liked Brooks, and I think I just get choice or select. Leader selects. And I've always been happy with Brooks's meat. Get a face full of smoke. I feel like they're pulling a calf here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we are. Yeah. At one point. So about like I said, it's we're gonna take a peek. Let some smoke out. Here's what we got. We got them sprinkled down with some salt, and some black pepper. Uh, Sea salt, what I use, of course, black pepper and some, and some fine, finer ground. It ain't really that fine, but it's brown black pepper. So, anyway, we're ready to go. So, we're gonna tell night, night until about. I'll check on them. We'll check on about five. Temperature. Or it, it's it's running about 250, but I've got the thermostat set at about two, somewhere right around 225 right in there. So uh, but everything's batting down. There's a fire. I may go ahead and put a little more wood on there. That'll. The thing is, here's another little deal with these oilers. I don't suck that down. I like to leave just a little bit of gap right there right in there that'll help that fire breathe a little bit and it'll it'll have to give you a little more pure smoke you won't have you know when somebody opened that door you got some brown smoke that's not a good flavor smoke so So I like to leave that little gap in there. That just gives a little, little bit of breath of air. That way when the damper closes, that, that'll that tend to come out in that area right here. And keep some of that out of there. So anyway, we'll, uh, we're gonna shut her down until about 5.36 in the morning and we'll come back up and see what we got. All right, it's about seven, almost 7.30. I don't know just if I slept in, but I was a little slow to get out of bed this morning. I did get up on oh, 4 o'clock. I woke up and thought I better come out and check the fire. I feel a log or two on. And that's, we still got a good, good, good bed of holes out there. Let's see. <clears throat> Ooh, I gotta get these leaves picked up. They're a mess. Let's see what we got here. Here's a good, good strong piece of oak. Throw a couple of them in there real quick. We're holding. It's about two ten, looks like. So. We're, 
we're in good shape. See what that does for the minute. I'll say they're looking pretty good. Got a mark on them. I don't. I mean, I've got some rhyme and reason why I do things, but it's not for anything certain. But I, just, I like to trip off my fall. That way, I come in from a couple different directions. The bottom, when I try to wrap tight, just to, just to seal <clears throat> what I can in there. Like that. And then this one. It just reinforces what I did the first time. So, but it's double wrap, double fold, so that they tuck in nice and neat. This is gonna be a first for me. So if anybody's got any ideas or anything like that, they can chime in. We're gonna try a couple of these in butcher paper. temperature a little bit ago it was about 200 to 201 something like that so i turned my thermostat to 200 so they may have come up another couple of degrees but that's fine so there they are the paper wrap one is there of course it's saturated in oil so and then we got the other other two three so now we're gonna put them in the cooler over here and let them chill uh, till tomorrow and then I'll take them out while they're cold slice them and uh, what I do is I we'll eat, we'll eat a little bit tonight but I'll vacuum pack one pound bags of sliced brisket and uh, keep that in the 
freezer and as we want it for supper or for lunch or whatever i'll pull one out and defrost it and, and it tastes it absolutely tastes just like you pulled it off the smoker still so it's it's really a good deal to do and it lasts i don't know how long it lasts it don't i mean we typically eat it uh get it all eaten up i guess the last time i died it's probably been a couple months ago so they don't have time to spoil a little walk-in cooler it's not a real big one like four by six something like that we got racks to hang deer and stuff in here or we got I keep a little shelf in there to do for stuff like this comes in real handy those guys chill I'll probably one in the paper I'll probably take it off this evening that's why we'll eat some of that one but uh there they are we're gonna let them chill for a while anyway we'll uh we'll uh holler at you in a little bit when we go to cutting one of them up I came in well that's the you can see the smoke ring in the brisket from we pulled off this morning this was the one that was wrapped in paper it's it's turned out pretty good 